My ex-husband, 35, and I, 23 female, have baby twins together. And due to a lot of complications from that pregnancy, I got a partial hysterectomy. We divorced during my pregnancy after I discovered he cheated on me. He's a good dad, and his girlfriend, 23, is now pregnant. He cheated on me with his current girlfriend, but she didn't know he had a wife at the time, and I firmly believe that. I run a pretty successful baking company in our small town, and I do custom desserts, including gender reveal cakes. My husband's girlfriend called me and asked if I would be willing to do a gender reveal cake for them and said it would mean a lot if the mother of her baby's siblings made the cake for the party. I told her I had to think about it, but eventually told her no. I am admittedly incredibly bitter at my ex for cheating on me at the same time as being bedridden and medically fragile, being pregnant with his children, and I don't want to be involved in the celebration of their new child. I did specify that it wasn't her, but I couldn't do it, and she said all right and hung up. My ex then called me and told me I was being rude, unreasonable, and completely unprofessional, putting our issues before my business. I told him I could refuse service to anyone and hung up. I feel like I've let a lot of my feelings get in the way of my business, and if I made the cake, it's not like I have to be there to celebrate. On the other hand, I do feel like I'm allowed to refuse business, however I see fit. Am I the idiot? Honestly, it was really generous of you to even think it over, and I 100% guarantee he was assuming they'd get a friends and family discount. You are not the idiot, OP. It's hard for me to imagine what kind of mental gymnastics your ex had to perform to be able to criticize you because you refused to help celebrate the child he produced with the woman with whom he cheated on you? He should be incredibly thankful and humble about the fact that you tolerate him at all around your kids after this stunt. The ignorance and entitlement of this baffles me. Please stand your ground and keep his toxic behavior out of your life as much as possible. OMG, I didn't even think of a family discount, but I bet you're right. That's why while ordering, she pulled the mother of the siblings trying to make that connection. I can absolutely imagine OP's ex-husband saying, just call OP, she'll do it for free. OP, that is totally narcissistic behavior and you have the right to refuse. It's nice of you to be so cordial with them and all, but asking to bake a cake for a woman he cheated on you with? Not cool on his part. And to be clear, you are not the idiot, but your ex-husband sure is. Girlfriend is an idiot. She didn't care about you and your family when she was shacking up with your ex. The sibling thing was pure manipulation. You have no obligation to her. And if you gave in, she wouldn't want to pay you because you're one big happy family. And they only want you to make the cake so they can tell everyone you made it as evidence that you have no hard feelings about him being a disgusting cheater and her being a side chick. It's as self-serving as it is ridiculous. See, me being the bitter person I would be in this situation would offer to make it, but instead of blue or pink, the inside would be black or full of shrimp or something gross. This is why I wouldn't be suitable as a baker or an ex. Not the idiot OP. You handled this beautifully and with class. You're a wonderful co-parent and role model to your babies. My dad was in the military. He died when I was a baby. His best friend was there for me and my mom always. He's one of the best guys I know and has had some of the most amazing stories of my dad. Some pretty hilarious ones about the many mess ups he had in basic training, etc. My mom remarried. Her husband isn't bad, but I was 12 when my mom married him and 11 when he was introduced to me. For me, I feel like I was too old to consider him a parent or a dad. He was always the nice guy my mom was married to. I call him my stepfather to be respectful, but I never looked to build a father-daughter relationship with him. I'm getting married next year, and I asked my dad's best friend if he would walk me down the aisle. It was a way of having my dad with me, sort of. Still, this man has been such a valued member of my family. He's honestly the only male adult I truly relied on as a child and went to with anything, though his husband is also very close because he's also a really solid dude. My stepfather was upset. He said it felt like he was being shafted for my dad. I told him this wasn't decided to hurt his feelings, but I did want a way to feel my dad with me and a way to honor him 
and the man who supported mom and me after we lost dad, who was able to share stories of my dad nobody else could. He said he should get a priority as a parent over a non-family member. I told him he already knew I didn't think of him as my parent. I asked him to sit down to figure out a different role for him. He said anything different is less than and not showing him the respect he deserves. Even though my stepfather knows I don't think of him as a dad, he feels like it's disrespectful not to have him be the one to walk me down the aisle. So by continuing with my dad's best friend, I might be an idiot, given I have been told my stepfather's feelings on this. Not the idiot. Your stepfather forgets that his wishes are secondary to yours at your wedding. If he had truly assimilated a parental role, he would ironically know that your wishes and comfort and that of your fiancé is most important. Instead, you've been mature and offered an alternative, and he's throwing his toys out of the pram. Not the idiot. No one is entitled to walk you down the aisle. It's an old tradition to give away the bride, and it's weird that your stepdad has said that he wants to do that. He didn't raise you. He's just the man your mom married. He isn't family. I love that you've asked your dad's friend to walk you down the aisle. He's been there for you from the start, and the biggest father figure in your life. I bet he's so honored. Walking down the aisle on your own can be scary, but having him with you will be such a precious moment. Your stepdad doesn't need a role in the wedding. He sounds manipulative. A step-parent that has been in the family seemingly more than 10 plus years isn't family? The one that is there every day, sun up to sundown, likely drove her places, helped the household financially, probably cooked and assisted at home, likely did a lot of dad work or care with her, is not family? I mean, yeah, she doesn't have to choose him to walk down the aisle, but your assumption he isn't family and doesn't need any role is just tone deaf and typical of the hatred and invalidation step parents get everywhere. No idiots here, but you are kidding yourself if you think since you were 12, you were too old for him to have to fill a parent role for you. Just because you don't see him that way doesn't mean he didn't do the work. You deserve to have the person you choose to walk you down the aisle, but I also think you owe your stepdad a real effort trying to build a relationship. It sounds like he's only been kind to you and hasn't done anything to deserve living on the outside of his family. Also, while it's important that you get to choose whoever you want to walk you down the aisle, it doesn't mean that choices are consequence-free. He is allowed to have whatever feelings he has about being rejected. My husband, 41, and I, 38 female, have been together for four years and have lived in Brazil for our entire relationship. He's an American, I'm a Brazilian. We met when he came to work in Sao Paulo, initially just for a year. According to him, his marriage had ended before he moved here, but apparently his now ex-wife thought they were still working things out because she saw it as infidelity when he started dating me, and in her eyes, I'm the woman who stole her husband from her. So you can imagine it's not an easy situation. The thing is, they have a son together. My husband and I also have a baby daughter. Lately, he's been pressuring me to move to the U.S. with him so that he can be close to his son. I can understand that, but he's asking me to give up a lot of what I've been working for in these past few years, career-wise, I know I wouldn't find an equivalent job in the U.S. I told him I would agree to move, even though it won't be the best scenario for me, if and only if his ex would give us joint custody. Apparently, she'll only agree on every other weekend, which amounts to less than 30 days a semester. That's pretty much the same amount of time we have with his son now, since he comes to Brazil every holiday to stay with us. The last summer, he spent more than a month here, which is more than what we would have living in the U.S. I don't think it's worth it for us to change our entire lives over that kind of time. In my husband's eyes, I'm pushing him into a custody battle with his ex instead of just agreeing with his request. He says I wouldn't make this request if I cared about his relationship with his son, which makes me sad because I love his son, just as if he was my own. I also fear he will resent me if things continue this way. He'll see me as the person who's keeping him away from his son. Am I the idiot for refusing to move? Not the idiot. Given how often you see him, your logic is sound. He had a son already when he chose to start a family with you where you are. Just because he changed his mind doesn't make you the bad guy for not doing what he wants. 
It sucks for him, but it's a problem of his own making, and you offered a more reasonable agreement. How about if he cared about his relationship with his son, he wouldn't have started a relationship with a woman in another country while he was still married. He can't blame you for the results of his choices. He now has children in two countries with two different women and expects you to sacrifice for it. I'm sure you have already given up plenty to meet in the middle with this previous relationship. It is okay to stand your ground on this one. OMG, you're right. I think the husband is lying through his teeth. I think he knew damn well that he led his ex-wife to believe that they were working things out. I'm sure she does think OP is the homewrecker, because in her mind, she is. I don't believe this guy for a minute. Do not move to the U.S. with this man. Red flags abound with this scenario. You are the idiot. Every other weekend may not be more time when added up in a chunk, but it's a more consistent time throughout the year, and that's very relevant in terms of his relationship with his son. She seems to be ignoring the very important context that spending every second weekend with your child makes for a more consistent relationship over time and a feeling of connection than only seeing each other a few times a year. Context matters here. My wife and I have two kids together. She has a son from a previous relationship. His dad is not in his life, so he's with us all the time. And I have a daughter from an earlier relationship. My ex is tough to co-parent with, and unfortunately, I only have my daughter every other weekend and one day a week. I used to coach her team because it gives me more time with her, but she's too talented to be coached by dad. So I am fighting to change this, to get more time. My daughter, young teen, has expressed to me that she's hurt that I spend more time with my two younger kids and my stepson, teen, more than her. And I'm doing my very best to let her know that she's not loved any less. And if I had my way, I would get to see her way more. My wife and I want to travel with the kids and my ex has made it very difficult and consistently refuses to allow my daughter to go. She needs permission from both parents to leave the state. So unfortunately, there's nothing I can do at the moment. My wife thinks that the other three should not be held back because of my daughter. I agree that the others should not be held back and I don't want them to resent my daughter if we don't travel because of her. However, I am not comfortable going on these trips if she's not there. I gave my wife my blessing to travel with my stepson and my two younger kids, but told her I could not join her because I didn't want to hurt my daughter more. I told her we could travel in a state as a family, but until she's 18, I don't feel comfortable going places without her. My wife is angry with me and says she does not want to travel alone with the three kids, and I'm a bad husband and father for not going. I told her that I understand her feelings and that we could pay for her mother or someone else to go with them if she felt like it was overwhelming. We got into a really big fight and I ended up telling her that I was looking out for the well-being of all four kids, but she's only looking out for her three. She told me that I'm an idiot for not going on the trip and accusing her of not loving my daughter. I did not accuse her of this. I just said she's not thinking about my daughter's feeling in this instance. So, am I the idiot for not going on a trip without my daughter? You are the idiot. All of your kids are entitled to spend the time with you and enjoy a vacation. Your wife needs someone to split driving and share discipline. She also wants your time and attention. Punishing everyone in your family because your daughter can't come is wrong. You're playing favorites and wasting precious opportunities to have fun and make memories. Be fully part of your family. Make sure your daughter knows how much you, her stepmother, and siblings wish she was there. Tell her she's always invited, but her mom has to say yes. Not the idiot. The only idiot here is your ex. You're in a no-win situation. Personally, I don't think sacrificing travel time with your wife and three other kids helped the situation though. Your daughter will eventually mature enough to realize she missed out on these trips because of her mother, whereas your wife and other kids will only have you to resent. Wrong. He could take this in front of a judge to grant a specific trip, if his ex is such a witch. Otherwise, it's more ammo for the ex to use to poison her against OP. Your deadbeat dad only cares about his new family. He left us because he doesn't love us. He could have asked you to go, but he didn't, etc. People who use kids as pawns are evil. Update. I talked to my wife and told her that we could go out of the state 
but she has to help me tell my daughter since it was her idea and she can't put it all on me. I told my ex that I would tell my daughter that she was the one blocking the trips. I told both of them that every trip we take without my daughter would be a father-daughter trip we take when she turns 18 and I will be taking solo trips with her if I'm forced to leave her behind. I'm sick of my daughter being used as a pawn. My husband and I live a reasonable distance from the rest of our families. 10 years ago, we both had job opportunities in the South. Our families live in the North. We chose to take said opportunities as it'd be cheaper housing and a salary increase. Since then, we typically see our families once or twice a year, usually going to them. Right before the world fell apart, my husband's sister and her husband retired about a half hour away from us. They're 20 years older than we are, pretty well off and tired of the cold. So from that point on, they started showing up unannounced. I didn't really mind so long as I wasn't expected to play hostess. In the beginning, they were really coming by to play with our kids and visit with my husband for a little bit. In time, that delved into them wanting to drink out on the deck with us after the kids go to bed, chatting for hours. I work 50 to 60 hour weeks. When I come home, I want to unplug and relax. My kids are getting to the age of being self-sufficient and don't need a ton of help. I recently told my husband I have no issues with his sister and brother-in-law coming over all the time, but I'm not hanging out with them each time. He yesed me, but I don't think he believed me. The other night, I came home, and there they were, helping my husband make dinner. I went upstairs, took a leisurely bath, and then got into some sweats. By that time, they had already eaten dinner. I nibbled on some leftovers, checked on my kids, talked with them about their day. Once they made it clear they just wanted to play video games and chill, I slipped back into my room to watch TV. After my kids went to bed, my husband texted me, asking if I'd join them on the deck for some drinks and dessert. I declined and went to bed early. My husband said I was completely rude for not hanging out with them the next day. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. It seems like you've set up a pretty reasonable compromise. Your husband's family can stop by without an invitation or notice but there can be no expectation of you to play host when they do so. If your husband wants you to play host, he needs to accept that that means they'll need to be invited and probably will be allowed over less often. You are the idiot. It wasn't a case of you not playing hostess. What I would have done is at least spent a few minutes saying hello, explained that you really couldn't enjoy the meal they graciously made, excused myself, and then had my bath, etc., I would consider it quite rude if I went out of my way to ignore a guest. You've disliked this arrangement for a long time, but instead of setting up social boundaries with your husband's support, you just went along, as if this was something you enjoyed. Then one day out of the blue, you acted rudely. Everyone's the idiot here. Don't you think it's time to set some boundaries? If you haven't told them not to come by unannounced, how are they supposed to know? I know, common sense, but still. I don't think you were rude. You were tired. They're retired and have forgotten how tiring work life can be. Your husband is being unreasonable. All of you need to sit down and talk this out.